all of a sudden everyone's an Eagles team Mac fan. Fair enough, the man did his research. Hamilton Sharma, you're watching Super Football, the home of Indian football fans. Welcome to Half Folly, where we hit the Indian football news as soon as it bounces off the ground. Let's get straight into VAR, aka very articulate review of the week. The 37 player probable list for King's Cup has been announced by Ego Stimac through AIFF. The tournament is set to start on June 5th, but the camp is unofficially supposed to start on May 20th. But what the fans are excited about the most is the fact that pretty much every player that they were asking for to start for the national team or at least be in a squad for the national team under Stephen Constein has been called up by Ego Stimac. The mandate is research. Rahul Beke, Abdul Khan, Anwar Ali, Brandon Fernandez, Renan Fernandez, Sel Abdul Samad, Amarjeet Singh, Radeen Tlang, Lalin Zola Changte, Nanda Kumar, Komal Thattal, Michael Sasairaj, and Jobby Justin. Now, the two notable absentees in that list is Ashik Kurnian and Jajir Lal Pekloa. Some fans lost their minds over social media for them not being included in the squad, but listen, guys, if the reports are to believe, both of them are injured, so you can you can calm down because, listen, he goes to mandate his research, he's picked some names that uh, some new Indian football fans probably don't even know about. So, Ashik Kurnian and Jajir Lal Pekloa, they both are 10 stars, so. After the end of King's Cup, Team India is set to play in another tournament, the Hero Intercontinental Cup, which is going to happen from July 7 to July 17. And the teams you're going to face are the following. Tajikistan, who are ranked 120, DPR Korea, who are ranked 121, and Syria, who are ranked 83. Now, as you might remember, the last edition of Hero Intercontinental Cup happened in Mumbai. This one was set to be announced in Bangalore if the post from Tajikistan FA is to be believed. But then, AIFF just recently came out with a statement saying that it's going to happen in Transteria in Ahmedabad. Now listen, I'm a big fan of the facilities at Trans Stadia. I think it's a great stadium. And obviously, the AFC Cup games for Chennai happen there. But I do think the football turnout there is not that great. Now, is it the best place to hold a tournament? I personally don't think so. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. I'm obviously keeping an open mind. So the rumors were true. The AFF has fined the I-League class for not turning up for the Super Cup. The fine is still lax and it's been imposed on five clubs. Aizol, Neroka, Churchill, Minerva and Gokulam Kerala. As for East Bengal, the fine is 5 lakh rupees, and as for Mohan Bagan, there is no fine at all. Now you must be thinking, why the discrimination? Let me explain. So the thing with East Bengal is that 70% of it is owned by Quest Group, and they did not want to participate in the Super Cup, whereas the 30% of it did want to participate in the Super Cup. So AFF thought, why find the whole club? Understandable. With Mohan Bagan, they never submitted the papers to participate in the tournament in the first place. So it wasn't essentially a boycott. But I do think that the fine in general is too hefty. 10 lakhs is way too much. Maybe a couple of lakhs would have been fine. I understand the punishment. I understand that as a federation, you have to punish clubs. But don't you think the fine is too steep? In episode 4 of Half Poly, we talked about Manchester City wanting to invest in a club in India. Man City Chief Executive Ferran Soriano has come out and said that, uh, that the intention to invest in India has been there for a long time, for, for probably two years, according to him. Yeah, that, that's, that's not happening. So apparently the partnership is happening between Quan Entertainment and Manchester City. And the funny thing about this is, Quan Entertainment is the same company that manages Mumbai City FC. And the CEO of Quan Entertainment is Indranil Das Bla, who is the CEO of Mumbai City FC as well. So back in March, the news was packaged in a way uh, that suggested that Man City is investing in Mumbai City FC. So a lot of Mumbai City fans got excited. But in reality, it was just a classic case of poor reporting. Now this section of the show is called Social Heat Map, where I take the best of your comments made on SPF. So last week I asked you, I don't remember what I asked you. I asked you about Stimac. And Sayant and Das says, While it may seem like a wrong decision to many, myself included, Stimac could prove to be a game changer. As for Roka, I think the AIF should try a new technique of making Pinto the assistant manager and give under 23 and the Indian analyst duty to Roka or Ericsson. Now Sayant I like a part of your comment and a part of it I do not. Uh, I like the fact that you're accepting Stimac as a coach and you want Pinto to work under him. I think I'm all for it and I would love to see more youth coaches working under the main national team coach. But I do not think that Roka becoming the coach of uh, the under-23 team or even Ericsson for that matter would help us at all. Because the national team coach has a philosophy of his own. The same goes for the technical director as well. And if those two uh, philosophies clash, the players who are going to graduate from the under-23 team to the national team will have a lot of problem adjusting in my opinion. So I think all the teams should fall under the technical director and the manager of the national team should take the under-23 team as well. Franz Nicholas says, I wish now that the buzz about the appointment of the coach is done. The AIFF concentrates on fixing the league structure in India, giving Santosh Trophy the treatment it deserves and broadcasting IWL among tons of other things that need to be fixed. Now, Franz, I think you're absolutely spot on. The big issues in Indian football usually get drowned 
uh, in the big noise is that uh, the big news pieces like Igor Stimak being announced the manager and naming his squad uh, make. I mean, it's important for all these big issues to also come to light while the big news pieces get their bit of limelight. I think what fans see on social media matters a lot. I think the younger lot does get swayed away by the flashier news pieces, but the educated ones have a massive responsibility of talking about these issues continuously on social media because it does matter. I've got a question for you guys. If there was one thing that you could fix in Indian football right now, just one, what would it be? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Now this section of the show is called Sudo Pundit where you take the Indian football posts that impressed us the most. This one is from Suchet. Stimak is definitely an interesting appointment. He comes with a lot of experience, but I'm curious to see how he will adjust to the shambles that is Indian football. I don't really care if he play defensive football or whatever, as long as he is flexible with formations and the team selection. As for Roka, I'm glad he wasn't picked. He's way too nice for the job, and I'm not sure if the players are good enough technically for his style of play. Now, I think what Suchet is saying here needs to be answered in two parts. Let's start off with Roka. Is he too nice? I personally don't think so. Listen, what we see out on social media, in media press conferences and all, that's not always the true image of a person. In, in training, he could really be a stingy person and could get the best out of his players. As for his style of play, I think he could have been the perfect manager for the Indian football team. I thought he would have been a good appointment, but he's not, and we move on. Now let's talk about Stimak. Suchen says he would be okay with uh, Stimak playing defensive football. I personally wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be okay with it, if I'm honest with you. Pretty much every single player and also people in EIFF have said that Indian football needs to take that next step. What does that next step mean? Us playing a better brand of football. And I would expect that under Stimak. And honestly, I wouldn't even blame the manager now because the list of probables does show a lot of promise. Mr. Joykill says, six clubs fine for not playing in the Super Cup. That's a total of 55 lakhs. The prize money for the Super Cup was 25 lakhs. What were EIFF thinking? The reason for punishing them is acceptable, but the size of the fine is not. Mr. Choi Kila, bring the attention to the real issues in Indian football, killing AI Fitz Joy. You're doing just your name. Well done. But listen, uh, if the amount that you're charged for not participating in a tournament is more than the amount that you would win if you actually win the tournament, uh, there's something that's wrong, right? Listen, uh, the general elections are about to come to an end. Praful Patel is finally going to be free. I hope that they've mended the relationship with the I-League clubs because this, frankly, is slightly embarrassing. So that's it for this episode of Half Holy. I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next time, I've been Akash Sharma. You're watching Sipa Football, the home of Indian football fans. I'll see you in the next video.